Good afternoon. I am Frankie Atwater, your new president and CEO of the DeKalb Chamber of Commerce. On behalf of the Chamber, we thank you for joining us today and we welcome you to our Power Lunch event. Today's event is made possible by our generous sponsor, Kaiser Permanente, AT&T, and Verizon Wireless. Part of our mission at the DeKalb Chamber is to support you, our business members, and our local economy by providing education, connection. Our membership committee works to support this mission by hosting several events each year, including this event, the Power Lunch Series. Throughout this lunch series, you can expect to hear from our community leaders, heads of our educational institutions, workforce development organizations, local elected officials, and small business experts. We hope you will leave each Power Lunch more informed about DeKalb County and armed with knowledge that will help you run your business. And we hope you will share this information with others. This Power Lunch is co-hosted by the Chamber's Governmental Affairs Committee. And I am honored to introduce Kendra Price, our co-chair of the Governmental Affairs Committee. Kendra Price, please. Thank you, Frankie. I am Kendra Price, Government Affairs Manager with Emory University and co-chair of the Governmental Affairs Committee for the DeKalb Chamber of Commerce. The Governmental Affairs Committee supports the Chamber's business members and the economy of DeKalb County by providing education, advocacy, and connection. One of our partners is the DeKalb County Board of Commissioners, and I am honored to introduce our guest speakers today. Commissioner Robert Patrick, representing District 1, and Commissioner Ted Terry, representing District 6, as they share a fresh perspective on DeKalb County. As the newly elected commissioner for District 1, Robert Patrick brings extensive experience to the DeKalb County Board of Commission. Prior to his victory, for over eight years, he served as councilman for the city of Doraville, where he was selected by his colleagues to serve as mayor pro tem for three consecutive years. Commissioner Patrick also served as both the vice president and the president of the DeKalb Municipal Association, participated in North End Transportation Studies, the Doraville Comprehensive Plan Update, the creation of the first Parks and Walkability Master Plan, and the first Buford Highway Livable Center's initiative. Robert holds a bachelor's degree in political science from the University of Georgia. He and his wife, Mary, have been proud residents of DeKalb County for over a decade. And together they share three wonderful kids, Robert Jr., Kate, and Sylvia. Welcome, Commissioner Patrick. I am also honored to introduce Commissioner Ted Terry. In 2020, Commissioner Terry was elected to serve as the Super District 6 Commissioner of DeKalb County after former Commissioner Kathy Gannon announced her retirement. His district includes half of the county with portions of South, Central, and North DeKalb, totaling approximately 350,000 residents. After elected, Ted was appointed by the presiding officer of the Board of Commission to serve as chair of the operations committee and a member of the Public Works and Infrastructure Committee. He will also serve as a member of the Resilience Advisory Board and Large Urban County Caucus with the National Association of County Commissioners. In addition to the other service, he currently serves as the first vice chair for the Democratic Party of Georgia on the advisory board for the Global Village Project and as a member of the DeKalb County Board of Health. Prior to his election, Ted Terry served as the mayor of the most ethnically diverse square mile in America, Clarkston, Georgia, from January 2014 to March of 2020. I want to say thank you so much, Commissioner, for being here with us, and um, we are grateful to have you both here today. Today's Power Lunch will be an interactive panel discussion, and I am delighted to introduce Gabrielle Rogers, a member of our Governmental Affairs Committee who will be moderating today's event. Gabrielle. Thank you so much, Kendra. Uh, I am Gabrielle Rogers, and I'm honored to be with you all today. Uh, we have had a few questions. But we have to 
I'm using the stage chat feature on the right hand side of your screen. We will allow time at So we will begin um, and share their prior and so we're going to start with the uh, Gabrielle, your audio kind of dropped out. Uh, I'm assuming you wanted me to go first? Yes, I do apologize. Yes, Commissioner Patrick, we will have you go first. Yes, sir. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh -huh. uh, first of all, thank you to Kendra. Uh, the introduction that you gave uh, sounds impressive. Um, I got to work up to those standards now. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, since taking off, um, well, first of all, I should say I campaigned on um, infrastructure, uh, getting our transportation uh, in a better position, uh, our water and sewer systems in a better position, uh, also our stormwater systems in better position. Um, in addition to that, there was this idea um, that government should be treating people with dignity and respect. And that's ultimately what my my objective has been and what I've been doing so far on the, on the commission, when interacting with my colleagues, uh, but also when working with the residents. Uh, and when it comes to some of the immediate concerns that popped up in the day-to-day -day goings on. Uh, it's been on things such as trash services, making sure for residential uh, as well as commercial that those services are being provided on a timely basis. Um, incidents do happen. Uh, not everything works as smoothly as we like, but uh, I think uh, DeKalb has a good recovery program, so uh, we've been working with the residents on that. Uh, also another issue has been uh, metal plates, things that people uh, get uh, agitated on, uh, or if the uh, street's been cut open and um, it needs to be patched. So working with staff to get those issues taken care of have also been sort of the uh, things that have been taking a lot of time. I can't help but not mention the COVID-19 realities that we still are in. Um, um, in fact, I was just talking to one of my staff members that we were sort of expecting at the beginning of the year once the vaccine was available that by this time we'd be all better and not having to worry about the, the vaccine or the viruses that are out there. Unfortunately, we're just not there yet. So a lot of time has been also allocated towards COVID-19. Uh, we have a media campaign where we went into some of the neighborhoods within District 1. And we talked uh, with uh, some of the Asian, Latin, uh, and other communities that are there. Uh, if you've seen billboards from District 1, you'll see that there are some are in Spanish, uh, Korean, uh, Chinese, and uh, of course, I forget the last one, I apologize. But um, the issue is, is reaching out to all of the residents to let them know that this is a priority, uh, regardless of your language. Um, if you're not vaccinated, we all are at risk. And so that's one of the priorities. Of course, we're also dealing with um, uh, the eviction moratorium. Um, and the county has been working with, uh, with uh, the TLAC program to address that. I've also allocated money from CARES to reach out to uh, one of the community partners and help them engage with the residents to try and help with uh, eviction assistance. Uh, we'll be, pre be preparing some funds coming up for the uh, water moratorium that's been lifted so that our residents also have a way to help uh, take care of those water utility bills. Um, so I ran on the idea of uh, infrastructure and, and getting government up to the speed that, you know, delivering those expected services uh, but there's also a bit of reality that we have to deal with, it, which is, is the virus is, is still active. And um, you know, until we get that taken care of, until our schools can open safely uh, and our kids are safe, we're still going to be dealing with those challenges. Thank you so much, Commissioner Patrick. Um, I can attest that you are one of the most uh, nicest uh, new in the Precisely Commissioners. Uh, we really thank you for your comfort. Um, Commissioner Ted Terry, it's good to see you again. Uh, if you would love to go and introduce yourself in five minutes, I am really going to allow our community. You think you're mute, can you? <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Is this still okay? We still can't hear you. Let's give us a second. Oh. 
can you can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, good. All right. I love the uh, I love how we have like fifteen different uh, online platforms now. Yeah. <laughs> I was just in a, a, a Microsoft Teams meeting, uh, and that's a a yeah. bear to navigate. Uh -huh. um, but so, sorry about uh, technical difficulties uh, and uh, being a little bit tardy. I was at a um, an Atlanta Regional Commission housing meeting where we were talking about rental assistance and the best processes and policies to get the money out to folks who need it the most. Um, and, and that is a big priority, something I'll, um, I'll touch on briefly here. Um, I think some folks know that uh, the county received uh, over 21, I think it's up to $26 million in rental relief funds. Um, we've had some setbacks along the way, um, but we've made some policies, uh, policy changes recently that I think have put us ahead of a lot of the other Metro Atlanta counties. And so to this, to, the, to date, um, I believe we've expended about 7 million of those um, 20 plus million dollars in funds. So we're, we're leading the way, um, but we still have a long ways to go. Um, uh, really great to be here with Commissioner Patrick. Uh, me and him uh, ran last year, you know, a lot of, the, I think every other county commission seat or CEO didn't have a challenger. <laughs> so they, they were just on the ballot without anyone on it. Uh, me and Commissioner Patrick, uh, you know, I had um, two runoffs. Uh, he had two runoffs in a general. <laughs> and so we were front and center talking to voters, listening to voters all throughout last year and campaigning during a pandemic, uh, during some ex extraordinary circumstances and events that took the nation uh, and took our communities by storm, I think have really, I don't know, I think they've influenced us, Robert. I don't know what you think, but um, I, I have this deep sense of urgency uh, because of hearing and listening and, and understanding really some of the, the major problems and challenges that we have in DeKalb County um, from the 30,000 foot level down to the ground level uh, with um, housing, infrastructure, stormwater, um, supporting our court systems, our public safety, um, our schools. Uh, there, there's so much going on in the cab, and uh, and everyone last year had an opinion on everything. <laughs> so, um, uh, I think one of our challenges is to to turn that um, those campaign ideas and to turn those uh, those campaign promises into action. And so, I'm I'm glad to be there here with Commissioner Patrick. We both come from a municipal background. You know, he was in Doraville and worked for Norcross, and I was mayor of Clarkston for you know almost seven years. And so, I think that municipal experience really grounds us. Um, in um, the work that we have ahead of us um, here in, um, in DeKalb County uh, writ large. And so um, I'll just end by saying that I'm looking forward to working with everyone over these next uh, you know, three and a half years now, we're um, nine months in. Um, uh, the, 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 the three top things I'll just mention that I'm really focused on is housing access and affordability, uh, environmental resilience, and then uh, justice reform. Um, those are three uh, top areas, uh, but there's a lot of other areas and a lot of intersection between some of those policies and those um, those issue areas. So uh, I'm looking to really address some of the, the systems that we have in DeKalb to try to make them better, or in some cases, you know, disrupt them and um, uh, and and dismantle them and and re uh, rejuvenate them for the 21st century. Um, there's a lot of things that we're still doing in DeKalb that probably made sense in 1990 or you know 1998 or maybe 2010 but this is 2021 mm -hmm. and we need to start leading uh with the future in mind and um so with that i'll, I'll pause and uh looking forward to the discussion today yeah thank you so much commissioner um ted terry uh you are actually our first question today so all the information that you just okay. shared about affordable housing um, i'm just gonna ask you questions about this how does that sound great let's do it Awesome. Okay, so you spoke earlier about uh, two of your initiatives, affordable and innovative housing solutions and sustainable urban culture. Um, can you tell us why these initiatives are important to you and how you came to partner with MicroLife and Roots Down? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. So two of my initiatives that I started earlier this year are um, one on, um, on housing access and affordability. Um, and then also uh, supporting and trying to grow um, urban agriculture um, opportunities. And so um, some folks may remember when I was in Clarkston, we passed uh, an amended ordinance to our cottage court um, uh, development ordinance that allowed for, uh, for tiny homes and for a different sort of clustering and sizes of cottage homes. And so the, the cottages on Vaughn is a half acre uh, pocket neighborhood, uh, just two blocks from downtown Clarkston. 
Uh, there's eight homes, uh, one tiny home, 250 square feet, and the other seven are a little under 500 square feet uh, with a 200 square foot loft. Um, and um, all within, with the idea of an intentional community to really um, you know, bring a, a pocket neighborhood um, and that sense of a neighborhood in a smaller space. And one of the challenges we have in, in DeKalb, and we had this in Clarkson as well, is that we're running out of space, uh, quite frankly. Um, if, if folks have been following our zoning cases, a lot of the developments are going after the last little bits of undeveloped forested area um, or even some uh, rundown industrial area into new developments. Um, but we need to look at how we um, uh, retrofit and sort of rejuvenate the suburbs uh, because DeKalb County was the, one of the first suburbs of, of Atlanta. And when you look at our, our framework of how our neighborhoods and how our development uh, went, it really is in that suburban um, sprawl, uh, which has created a lot of challenges for us in terms of transportation, transit access, um, as well as just affordability. Um, and so the idea of a pocket neighborhood, it's not a, a, a one fits, you know, one size fits all solution for our housing crisis, um, but we've got to find ways to um, integrate more, um, more housing density into our current um, housing um, policy. Um, and so there's, I think, a lot of opportunities with this type of development, whether it's um, uh, downsizing baby boomers and empty nesters or starter homes for millennials um, or just the aging in place um, for a lot of our residents. I hear all the time that we have um, uh, grandmas and grandpas who have lived in their homes for 50, 60 years. Um, they're seeing their neighborhood change um, and there's no real um, missing middle um, opportunities for them before they go from being an independent living at their home to an institution. And, and what I'm looking for is an aging in place housing policy that allows for a sort of more graduated step into um, uh, to keep independence and to keep that aging in place in, in their neighborhoods, in their communities, before going to sort of what is, you know, the, the reality of aging. And that's um, more managed care, more assisted living, and then ultimately nursing home care and, and, and end of life care. Um, and a lot of the seniors I talk to, uh, they don't want to leave their neighborhoods, but they have no other option to stay. And so that's a, in, in a crucial aspect, I think, as we grow as a county, that we don't displace our longtime residents. Um, and then the last piece on the urban agriculture, you know, it's funny, DeKalb County was um, was one giant dairy farm <laughs> for the first, you know, 100 plus years of our existence. And so we actually have a deep agricultural history, uh, but it's been replaced by suburbia and by development since then. So you don't really see too much farming that takes place in DeKalb. And so that just means that we have to adapt and that's where urban agriculture comes into play. Uh, we know that food insecurity is a real problem and it, it, it sort of intersects with housing affordability. Um, if folks are worried about paying their rent and paying their utility bill, food becomes sort of um, lower down on the list. And so what I'm looking for is creating more opportunities, whether it's locally in your neighborhood or on public sites like libraries. Um, we have a couple of pilots going on at several libraries in DeKalb. Um, and we just wanna create more opportunities for folks to grow food, um, to integrate some of that food into our landscapes uh, that quite frankly, we spend hundreds of millions of dollars just as a society and economy in Metro Atlanta, just to man manicure lawns and manic manicure uh, landscapes. Um, and we wanna look at some other options to, um, to create integration into our landscapes to have more orchards, more edible landscaping, more opportunities to grow food locally, um, which you know will will mean that we can address food insecurity and hunger. Wow! Thank you so much, Commissioner Terry. It's always good to have a forward-thinking um, elected official in our corner, so we really appreciate that. Uh, Commissioner Patrick, your experience in public service um, spans responsibilities on many sides of the municipal spectrum. I'm from city planning to Doraville councilman to mayor pro tem to president of the DeKalb Municipal Association. What quali qualities do you believe uh, you bring to the commission that is a benefit to the county as a whole? Uh, great question. <clears throat> so beginning with my experience from Norcross, um, you know, as, uh, as the senior planner before I left, I had about 14 years experience there and was really familiar with the nuts and bolts of how to get a project or get a permit through the development process and get people out the door where they can start working. Um, and so that's sort of one of the things that I've been looking at. Uh, we've had, I've had opportunities to talk with uh, Mr. Andrew Baker, who's with community development. Um, uh, 
Uh, I was part of the group along with Ted that was able to uh, uh, support the budget and make investments in permitting software that can help uh, businesses and, and even individual homeowners make it more quickly through the development process or through the permitting process. And that's sort of um, critical value. You want to be able to go back to your residents and say things are done in a timely fashion. Uh, to future developers or builders in the area, you know, they want to be able to go through the permitting process and realize it could be a 30, 45 day review process, but sort of have this level of assurance that they can make it through the process and get working after that. So um, my focus has been and what some of my attention has been directed towards making sure the permitting process is working. Uh, I've had residents and businesses reach out whenever there's been a bit of a snag and been happy to talk with staff and ask them to interact directly with the with the applicant to see if we can get that resolved. So I guess what I'd say, I get it. I understand that residents and businesses want a timely process to go through. As far as being a councilman with the city of Louisville uh, for eight years, um, there are many efforts that uh, you get behind and you get involved with and you think there's a, a lot of support for and then you find out uh, when it comes to the day to take the vote that, you know, what we thought was a, a a solid deal, a lock on. Um, the other commissioners were a little more tentative on, and it took a little more talking with uh, them to sort of get them to the point where they might support something. A good example would be opportunity zones. Uh, there was a, an initial effort to put an opportunity zone over all of the non residential properties in Doraville. And um, having worked in Norcross, I saw the benefits of that and uh, talked with some of the council members and heard what I thought was a yes, but when I dug in a little bit deeper, as in the day of the vote, it was like, no. So um, uh, the benefit that I have, or the experience that I bring that benefits the county at that point is, is talking with commissioners, uh, interacting with them. Um, the first blush might be a positive response, uh, but it's taking that time to talk with them and maybe get into a little bit of the weeds with them and see if that's, if that's where their heads are. Is that meeting the objectives that they have. Um, and so one of the things that I thought that would be important that I brought over from the municipal as well as my uh, uh, um, time as an employee for a municipality, simple things like a countywide map that shows where all the sidewalks are. That's something that a lot of the municipalities already have. But with that very simple tool, we at the commission can start talking about, well, how do we connect things? What are the things we want to connect? Schools to neighborhoods? Marta stops, that's important. How about grocery stores? How about our parks? Um, and not just look at it necessarily on a neighborhood basis, but start looking at it as a countywide basis. Where, um, you know, if you remember back in the day, there was the tour to Georgia, where it was a bicycle mm -hmm. race across Georgia. But we could have a tour to cab. Let's build out our trail system. Let's get it connected to from the south side to the north side and all points in between. We can start talking about DeKalb more as a tourist destination. We can start talking about DeKalb as um, perhaps a place where you can start a, a career in the hotel business. Um, but those are plenty of opportunities. And so that's another benefit I bring is, is I've seen it happen and I know how it fails and I know how it comes back together to make it work. Um, I think that was all of your questions. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Commissioner. Uh, listen to Terry, uh, we've also heard a lot about of people involved. Are there plans to replicate this project throughout DeKalb County uh, to meet the needs of affordable housing? Yeah, so um, let me first just say a uh, comment on what Commissioner Patrick said about the sidewalk uh, map like that. That's I we had that introduced a few he introduced that a month, month ago or so. And, um, you know, that's that's a really good idea because <laughs> uh, we just you know, you're right when you're in a city, you kind of sort of have a little bit smaller territory. But the cab is so large that it just really um, I don't know, probably just never we never got around to it. Um, but that's something that really, really, I think, is a small thing that can mean a lot for a lot of people, especially when we know that. Uh, some uh, of our neighbors um, uh, have to walk and bike in order to, to get around and have to use transit because they don't have any other options. Um, and then also just having walkability and bikeability just means that we have a healthier, happier community. It's just been proven that when you create you know, wider sidewalks and you know, better pedestrian access and safety, people get out and use it and they, then they interact with each other and that's where community happens. And so you know, that, that idea, I think, is a really solid one because it, it, it kind of gets to the core of what local government is. And that's about delivering services, but also having a sense of place um, and giving people a place to, for community to happen. So that, that's a, a important thing I wanted to, 
just as a highlight and I'm looking forward to, you know, working with them to get that through because that's going to be an important project. I'm um, to vote. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you got my vote on that one, Robert. That's an easy one. I'll, 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 I'll speed around the bush, though. Um, <laughs> and uh, but yeah, you know, so in uh, in Clarkston, we had to change the how the cottage court development ordinance uh, before the the cottages on Vaughn could be could be built. And so in DeKalb, there is a cottage court ordinance, but it hasn't been updated in almost 15 years. And so it's sort of a little bit behind the times. Um, it doesn't really address kind of the density issue. Um, it sort of treats cottages as you just have a, a big lot and then just have a smaller home on it. Um, and so I think what we're looking at doing, we're working with uh, Director Baker at the planning department and their team uh, to begin to, to dive into what a, you know, a redlined version, an updated version of our cottage court ordinance would look like, um, uh, you know, and whether we want to make it part of our code or make it just part of a, a special land use permit. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can can take it, but I think the first step was just sort of proving that uh, a pocket neighborhood could be built uh, and could be built in an affordable way. And then hopefully as more developers and more cities and county leaders see the cottages on bond, they see that this is a one, one of many solutions to our housing crisis. And so the goal is to introduce, um, you know, at some point in the next six months, uh, a, a redlined version, and then we'll, we'll go through the committee process, and you know we'll do our normal course in the county commission, which you know can take several months. And, and I, actually, I think Robert wouldn't it it'd go through the zoning process? So we have it probably talk about it at the zoning meetings instead of the regular BOC meetings. So um, every two months, you know, y'all should join us for our zoning meetings. They last you know about nine or ten hours, um, <laughs> but um, it's really fascinating stuff. It, it is the economic it is economic development. Uh, because that's that's the reality where we are in DeKalb. A lot of the zoning is out of date, and so we have to really work with developers and businesses um, to uh, to to amend and update our zoning um, on certain projects. And so this is a it's a good opportunity to kind of get clued into what economic development is happening in DeKalb. Perfect. Thank you so much, Commissioner. Um, Commissioner Patrick, the buzzword of the decade is infrastructure. Uh, can you elaborate on specific areas that you feel are the most important improvements that the commission can focus on in this area? Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, I think hands down, the most important one is the water and sewer system. Um, and we uh, voted to approve the capital improvement project list earlier this year. Uh, I believe it's been signed off on by uh, EPA, EPD, and we're waiting on the judge to make a final determination. Uh, but once we have that system, that water and sewer system up and functional, that is the opportunity for DeKalb really to start experiencing growth. Uh, with that sewer system, you can handle additional capacity, which gets to what Commissioner Terry talked about is building density um, in certain nodes or communities. Uh, and that, in my mind, once again, gets back to infrastructure. Where is the right place to build these density locations? Uh, and I sort of think that the, the nodes that have been talked about with the top end transit system, uh, the BRT that's been discussed is an approach to, to look at. Um, there are areas where, uh, again, old shopping plazas, perhaps uh, old churches that are not at full capacity. Um, perhaps those are opportunities where we talk with them about building density on their property. Uh, those areas, typically churches uh, and those other transit nodes will have good connectivity towards commercial areas but as well as sidewalks and parks, which again is another critical component. Um, the other thing to talk about is, is our stormwater infrastructure. Uh, as uh, Commissioner Terry mentioned earlier, a good bit of DeKalb County was uh, built out after World War II. Uh, we had some of the initial successes, such as uh, Doraville had the uh, GM assembly plant. I believe there was a Ford plant uh, towards the south end. Um, but as time has gone on, as we've expanded beyond that, all of the new stuff that was put in the ground, all the new water and sewer, all the new gas lines, all the new power, the, the idea of indoor plumbing and electricity, which was the new thing back in the 1940s and 50s, that's, a, that, that's, that's the bottom floor expectation. You've got to have high, high end, excuse me, a high speed internet connectivity to your home now, um, just in case your kids can't make it to school, just in case there's a snow apocalypse. And so infrastructure comes in many ways, of course, the priority is going to be uh, the water and sewer system through the capital improvement project list, uh, but we need to be talking about transportation. 
We need to be talking about the, the, the housing hubs that we can build around the new water and sewer system. Um, and so those are some of the other priorities that we've been looking at. And again, just to get back to stormwater, since much of the, the, the parts of the county were built out, you know, let's say before the 1980s, a lot of those areas don't have stormwater regulations that were in place back in the day. So if you bought a home that's towards the bottom end of the neighborhood, and I'm talking in a topography sense, when it rains, that little babbling brook that used to go through the front of your property that looks very cute now has the potential to be a raging stream, which can damage your foundation, which then affects your roof. <laughs> so that type of infrastructure is also important. And um, it's a way to protect our existing housing stock. Uh, again, as uh, Commissioner Terry's mentioned, we uh, have an affordable housing crisis. Typically, more affordable housing means older housing. And we have to be finding a way to protect that older housing where it's still viable, um, still provides a, a good place to raise a family or to you know, a shelter from the craziness that's going on in the world today that we're experiencing. Uh, but again, water and sewer, transportation, and that also includes uh, trail system and sidewalks, as well as stormwater, uh, are important infrastructure components. Perfect. Thank you so much, Commissioner Patrick. That word has been thrown around, but thank you so much for educating us today. Um, Commissioner Terry, uh, you were recently appointed to the DeKalb Service Board. Uh, what are some of your goals to target with this new appointment, and how does it impact the citizens of DeKalb County? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the uh, DeKalb Community Service Board is the mental health service provider in DeKalb County. It is a quasi state agency, uh, but has uh, more direct ties to the, the, the local community. And, and in fact, actually, we provide uh, nearly 10 percent of the funding through just the county taxpayers to the this community service board. Uh, the rest comes from state and federal um, funds. Uh, but, you know, one program in particular, uh, or actually two programs that I'll mention, one is the um, opioid uh, residential treatment program that was launched last year's mm -hmm. uh, last year under the CARES Act funds. And we're looking to extend it uh, through American Rescue Plan money uh, this year and into next year. Um, that has been a tremendously successful program because it, it in essence, is a rehab program um, and uh, upwards of uh, of 30 beds um, and or capacity to serve 30 um, at any one time. And we and if you've been following just the, the opioid crisis, um, you know, addiction crisis over the last decade, um, it, it's DeKalb is not has not been saved from it. It's not a rural thing. It's not just an urban. It's, it's all over. And so we have opioid addic addiction in DeKalb County. And this program has been tremendously successful in getting people back on the right track. And so drug treatment continues to be the best way to win the war on drugs. Um, it's, it's, you know, over incarceration, uh, you know, uh, punitive measures, uh, prohibition, all of these things lead to the black market, lead to um, enhanced, increased crime. Um, I, I'll just share with you a kind of a dark day. Yesterday, I was on a eight hour police ride along with the cab gang unit task force. And the first call that we got yesterday at 3 p.m., broad daylight was a, a, a murder. And I, I was out at a murder scene yesterday um, and it quickly in, it quickly led into a high speed chase uh, down Rainbow Road to um, uh, Wesley Chapel. Um, and they're, they're still looking for the suspect, uh, but it was a drug deal gone bad. Um, that's that's as, as far as we can tell, that's that's exactly what happened. Um, and so it's 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 manifesting itself in crime um, in uh, d destroying people's lives. Uh, and sometimes overdoses. So the community service board, just that program alone is something that we've, we've got to keep keep funding um, because it is literally saving people's lives. Um, and then the other one is related to public safety. Um, and DeKalb actually was really on the forefront almost 15 years ago when uh, we created the, the co-responder model um, where a, crisis, a trained crisis nurse uh, and clinician went uh, side by side with a DeKalb police officer um, for what they call the 1030s, the multiple, the um, the mental health calls, um, which we have hundreds and hundreds of uh, every month. And so this co-responder model, we're expanding it to three additional crisis nurses. So every uh, precinct, the four police precincts in DeKalb County's jurisdiction uh, would each have an assigned crisis co-responder um, unit 
uh, that would go along with police, with fire, uh, with EMS, uh, to have that extra skill set available, um, you know, if it was needed. Uh, and sometimes um, uh, those uh, that's, that's, that that skill set and that um, that de-escalation training uh, can can really uh, can also save lives uh, because what we don't want to have. Um, is a, a police force that doesn't have the resources and the training to respond to someone who's having a mental health crisis that might end in um, a shooting, um, a tasing that ends in injury or death. Um, we've been really good about it over the, the last several years, but DeKalb has, hasn't been immune from those incidences, um, whether recently uh, with Matthew Zadok Williams or the um, or Mr. Hill from back in 2018. And so this so enhancing and increasing the capacity of this program uh, just means that we're going to be able, be able to better respond uh, to folks who who we know exist in our county that continue to have mental health challenges. Uh, but the Community Service Board is an amazing organization. I'm so glad that CEO Thurman appointed me to that um, and uh, as the, the one commissioner uh, spot on it. Um, and if anyone uh, does want to get involved with the CAP CSB, um, they can always reach out to me and, and you can find their information on the website. Um, so always looking to partner, whether it was with schools, um, church organizations, um, businesses, especially if you're a business and you know that you've got folks that are out there on the street, out in front of your business who, who need help. Um, we, we've been working recently with a, a woman who has been sort of inhabiting the sidewalk at uh, North Decatur and DeKalb Industrial at, near the Kroger Shopping Center. Um, she's sort of come and gone for, for almost a decade now. Um, and so recently we've been able to work with CSB and DeKalb Human Services to, uh, to get her housing, more stable housing and support that she needs. Um, but that's just an example of... Um, you know, where we have to be proactive and, and can keep working on it. It's not something that we're just going to solve or it's going to go away overnight. Uh, but working with local businesses, we were able to sort of work together to address that problem in real time, um, you know, kind of clean up the corner, um, get her in a better situation um, and, and just keep, you know, keep working the process. Thank you so much, Commissioner Terry. Um, first, thank you for that personal story, you know, the, with the ride along, but also um, just the mental health services is really music, music's my ears, not only for the community, but also for our law enforcement. So thank you, thank you so much. Um, Commissioner Patrick, um, what challenges do you wish to tackle during your first term and what is your vision for the CAB's future? Yeah, thank you, Gabriel, for that one. Um, <clears throat> so I guess my, my vision has been um, a county that is economically vibrant and growing, uh, has housing options for our residents, uh, has uh, good uh, job opportunities and shopping opportunities for our residents as well as parks uh, so they can enjoy living here. Um, um, CEO Michael Thurman recently appointed me to the Decide to Cap uh, Economic Development Board uh, or Downtown Development Authority. Um, and it has been a pleasure being on that. We have been working on a variety of things. Uh, if you pay attention to what's going on in the media, uh, recently there was an allocation district that was approved um, off of, uh, by the Indian Creek Martyr Station. Uh, that'll be bringing in jobs as well as uh, another movie studio, uh, which is great for the community. Again, more reasons to be in DeKalb, more economic investment within DeKalb County. Uh, there's some other projects that we're looking at right now. Um, I myself have been working on things, <clears throat> how can we take some perhaps land that's not ideal, uh, either through the Brownfield program or uh, perhaps uh, through uh, uh, floodplain areas and see if there's ways that we can still use that land for housing options uh, as long as it's safe and it doesn't cause problems downstream for uh, residents and businesses uh, that are downstream. Um, uh, so again, that would be one thing is economic growth of our county. Again. Infrastructure is a big deal. Uh, supporting the capital improvement project list was a, was a very important step um, and providing everything that our water and sewer department needs to be able to get that, that taken care of in a timely fashion or even faster than what's anticipated uh, would be a, a, another good policy objective. So that again, um, when businesses or residents wanna move to DeKalb County or do improvements on their existing properties here, it's timely, it's effective, it's efficient um, and then people can stop worrying about what the cab requires to do something and they can go about their lives and start doing uh, those economic activities thank you commissioner um, patrick so we have a few minutes left before we go to our q and a but i would love to have you both give us a call to action at the chamber um how we can best uh 
at the chamber how we can best give a continue to advocate for small businesses and continue to advocate for economic um, growth. So I'll start with um, Commissioner Ted Terry and then in with Commissioner Patrick and then we'll go into the questions from our audience. Yeah, well, I think the best thing that we can do is to work with the chamber to identify where there's areas where just our sort of standard government services, like Commissioner Patrick talked about, permitting and business licensing and inspections and code enforcement and, you know, all the things that just sort of are about your business and seeing it succeed. And there's a lot of elements to that, um, tr you know, expanding transit, expanding walkability and bikeability. I mean, any sort of infrastructure or transportation mobility options that connect people with business, you know, with centers of business uh, and commerce um, should help the business, um, uh, you know, writ large. And then certainly I think when it comes to, um, uh, you know, just making sure that when people say DeKalb County, they're like, man, DeKalb's doing a lot of really great things. Um, and they, they have positive things to say more so than, ne than negative. And that's not a, an aspersion against anyone, you know, in the past or anything, but it's just saying that, you know, we, we need to do, uh, we need to really focus in on, on being a leader um, and, and, and making sure that the message is that DeKalb is a place to do business uh, because if we didn't have those, um, those small, medium, and large size businesses. We wouldn't have the job centers. We wouldn't have the the type of goods that we want to see. We, you know, I'm personally speaking, I love food. <laughs> so, you know, I think one of the great things about the Cab County is we have. I think we have. I think we rival Atlanta for types of restaurants. And and so, you know, I want to see us expand our food. Um, you know, uh, business community. Uh, but certainly, I think there's so many uh, kind of emerging fields um and and one in particular i'm thinking of that uh when i was in clarkston we worked with emory's start me program at the Gozueta business school and it was just so great to see the the hundreds and hundreds of decab and clarkston residents and then also they did east lake area as well mm -hmm. um of just residents that would that came up with these amazing new business ideas and entrepreneurial spirit and they were just looking for a little bit of help to kind of get to that next level and so i think we need to be thinking about whether through the chamber, through Decide to Cab, you know, how can we really help with new business startups um, as well as I think just, you know, supporting current businesses and, you know, and, and how the county operates as well as supporting marketing, um, administration, um, all the things that y'all deal with. Um, you know, we don't all have, we don't all have the answers um, individually, but together we have all the answers. And so we can learn a lot from each other. And so creating that ecosystem where we can come together like we're doing here um, is, is gonna just keep us all on the same page and keep that vision, uh, you know, moving, moving forward together. Thank you so much. And to you, Commissioner Patrick, our call to action for us, for the Chamber. Um, I think this right here, this forum is a great first stop on that. Interacting, collaboration, uh, starting the conversation is always critically important. Um, the business sector tends to hear what they need or is able to speak to what they need to have happen, whether it's uh, permitting processes or um, zoning conditions that work for the neighborhoods as well as for their business is absolutely critical. So again, that conversation, that interaction, um, not just be, not just starting here, but one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations with individual businesses, with the chamber, uh, and then on connecting with staff to help things move through the process much more faster um, and reliably. Thank you so much. Um, thank you both. So let's go ahead into our Q&A. We have a few questions here. Uh, so our audience has been listening. So our first question is from Demetrius Kelly. Uh, so the first question is, how have how have to processing of rental assistance has improved? How has the processing of rental assistance has improved? And can you give us some feedback on what steps have been made to improve the process? Anything <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll say the first step is, is that we actually got it up and running. Uh, we had a, um, a significant uh, delay or, or a monkey wrench that was thrown into the process. So once we got past that and got that working, um, um, I've spoken with a resident that uh, um, got some help trying to even fill out the application. She had some snags uh, uh, getting things uploaded and staff was able to reach out and literally help her during the process to get through it all. So in that regard, um, from what I've been hearing, it has been helpful. 
Uh, you're always going to be timeliness issues, which is a concern. Um, but as of right now, there's always room for improvement, but it's working. Yeah, that's exactly right, Commissioner. Um, and I'll just add that the, um, the the policy change that the commissioners, um, you know, voted in support of uh, last month to um, to to lift sort of the ceiling from sixty percent of back owed rent to one hundred percent or twelve months, not one hundred percent necessarily, but to at least twelve months or up to twelve months. I think has given a lot of the landlords that have quite frankly, been refusing to negotiate and mediate with their tenants in this tenant landlord coalition. Um, it, it's given them the opportunity to sort of say, okay, well, I can't get back everything, but I'm getting back a lot more than I would otherwise. Mm -hmm. And so that's, I think, that's why you're see, seeing DeKalb sort of jump to kind of the top in terms of money. I think we're at about 7 million uh, dispersed so far out of the first 21 million tranche. And so that policy alone, you know, has taken us from, under a million to seven million in just six weeks. So that right there has been the one little, that was that just that one change. Now there's lots of other little changes we can talk about and um, I won't get into it now, but that right there is, has been huge. And I'm just glad that the TLAC and CEO Thurman and the commissioners are you know, all in sync on that policy because it really has made a difference. Awesome, thank you. This, uh, this question is for Commissioner Patrick. Uh, thank you for your service. How do you envision transit along the top end of 285 uh, could help boost economic development for DeKalb? That's a great question. Um, so if we were to look at what's envisioned, uh, Peach Pass lanes will sort of generally stay within the exec existing 285 right of way. Um, the idea is, is you can go from Tucker uh, all the way to uh, Cumberland CID at some point within about a 45 minute drive uh, on that bus rapid transit. Once you have that ability for your residents from any part of the top end to get to any other part of the top end, that's phenomenal. And one of the things we need to work on is, is it also extending it down to the South DeKalb so that those residents can be engaged in that as well. Um, when we talk about affordable housing problems, um, it happens a lot in the cities. Uh, but if we were to engage all of the county with a good transportation system, that alone activates uh, those residents and those housing options. So that's the first thing. Now a more specific example. So at the Peachtree Presidential Parkway, the old hotel, um, we've been talking with the developer, uh, trying to move that forward, that project forward. Um, but if you look at that location at 285 and 85, it's probably about a two or three mile drive down the road to get to the assembly plan where they're anticipating about 5,000 new jobs. And these are gonna be good paying jobs in the film industry. That's the kind of connectivity that we need to be talking about. That's the benefits of that kind of connectivity. Also, Amazon will be coming in up at the Doraville Gwinnett County line. Those will be bringing in additional jobs. Um, we don't have the housing stock available. So if we have a way with the top end transit to connect the potential housing development around the uh, presidential parkway and up and down 85 to those job centers. Now we have potentially affordable housing with good jobs and places to shop. And again, DeKalb County starts growing. Uh, hopefully those future residents see the value of living here in DeKalb. And as they transition out of uh, perhaps the starter homes or the affordable housing component, then they can look at some of the existing single family housing stock that we have and start making investments long term within the county. So that's sort of the benefit of the virtuous circle of one one component can have so many other positive effects on other aspects of our economy. Awesome. Thank you so much, Commissioner. We have a few minutes left before we close out this session. But um, our next question is, when do you anticipate the cab might begin advocating uh, for a referendum on a transit tax so the 2019 transit master plan can move forward is implementation. Right now, <laughs> right away, <laughs> right away, right away. No, I think um, I think the advocacy advocacy has begun behind the scenes. Right. Commissioner Patrick um, just got to, you know, get our ducks in a row, because as everyone knows, um, the I can't remember which bill that was passed a few years back, but um, the DeKalb County Commissioner you know, at the State House, State Senate, um, the Cab County Commission 
has the power to say we're going to let our residents decide on how transit expands in DeKalb County. And so we simply would just need to pass that resolution to put it on the ballot. Um, my personal opinion, we should do it sooner than later because it's a big county and the elections happening next year and we need time to get the word out and educate folks um, about what's happening. Um, and then certainly, I think, you know, for the for, for the advocacy side, you know, we as commissioners wouldn't advocate, but certainly there will be time for an advocacy campaign to be created to do that portion of that the engagement. Um, but no, I'm in favor of, of doing it sooner than later and, you know, um, um, preferably, you know, within the next few months will be a good, good time to get it going. <laughs> what do you think, Robert? <laughs> um, you know, I agree with you that sooner rather than later would probably be better, but we also have to take in mind uh, or in consideration some of the other concerns and priorities that are out there. Um, we've had amazing success, I think, with the SWAS program for our roads. Um, we also have other considerations that are, are, are out there. Um, some of our enterprise funds need to need to be fixed, need to be healed. Um, and that's going to be a conversation with the residents on what's the what's the priority. Uh, transportation is a way that really takes care of a lot of other problems and open up, uh, brings in economic development for those other issues to be addressed. Um, but we just have to be mindful of what the residents are willing to, to tolerate and what they consider to be the priority. Again, stormwater, nobody wants the house flooded out. A lot of our housing stock was built, as I said earlier, before we had stormwater policies in place, which means you know, perhaps 10, 20% of our housing stock might be in a floodplain or might be in a water challenge location. How do we address those residents' concerns uh, for those priorities? Um, and then the, as always, there's the expectation that the services that the county's already committed to Got to follow through on those as well. Um, so we have a big county and we have lots of things to talk about on what are the priorities moving forward. Um, and that's sort of, I think, the discussions we'll probably be having uh, towards the end of this year, beginning of next year. Um, so. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you so much. But you have a lot of volunteers to sign up as well. So in our chat, so we're going to hold you to that, okay? Okay. Uh, <laughs> but our last question um, is. Um, from the space, congratulations to both uh, Commissioner Patrick and Terry. Uh, fresh ideas are good. What are your plans for making the cab beautiful again? And what are your plans to keep businesses in the cab instead of closing? Oh, Very loaded just, question. <laughs> yeah, I'll just, um, I mean, you know, we're, we're continuing to spend, gosh, I think it's like $7 million, right, Commissioner Patrick, on the sort of the keep the cab beautiful um, sort of beautification budget. Um, it's a lot of mowing grass and picking up trash and clearing out dead trees and debris and curb cutting and um, street sweeping. And so we got to keep that going. Um, but would it surprise you that we've got a long list of streets that probably need to be added to that list uh, that we probably don't necessarily have the full amount of resources needed to do so. Um, so, uh, I, you know, I think as in a lot of cases in government, it kind of comes down to how much money you got uh because we could be street sweeping every street in, street in the cab uh it just might cost like 20 or 30 million dollars so you know it's kind of a priority thing um i'll just say one you know thing from a policy perspective um i'm a big believer that we need to uh divert uh certain types of products from the um sanitation and from sort of the waste stream so uh i know for instance we are working right now with the Center for Hard to Recycle Materials, CHARM. Um, they have a site in Athens and Atlanta. Um, there's a lot of things out there, a lot of illegal dumping, uh, things that won't be, can't be taken by the landfill that just end up on the street. And if we can do a CHARM East, uh, we're looking at over sort of um, near uh, Columbia and Mor Memorial Drive. But if we can kind of you know put that deal together in the next few months, uh, we think that we'll have a CHARM site in DeKalb, uh, you know, by this time next year, and that's just it's a it's it's free you know there doesn't cost any money for people to drop off things and computers paint cans you know oil i mean just all the things that are just like incredibly toxic to our um environment um can be diverted and so we got to create policies and you know diversions of those types of really hazardous waste um and then i'm just going to be so bold as to say that we need to phase out single-use plastics for a lot of um situations um, whether it's bags or carry out containers, um, uh, 
in some cases, straws. Um, those are things that just, um, if you just anywhere in DeKalb, you, on any given day, you can see a plastic bag floating, <laughs> you know, in front of you. And if anyone likes seafood, uh, I love seafood, but guess what? All the plastic that's washing in from all the watersheds here in Metro Atlanta and upstream and downstream out to the Gulf of Mexico, out to the Atlantic Ocean, it's eventually breaking down. It's staying in the environment. Fish are eating it. And if you know, if you like fish, you know, you should be in favor of diverting and re reducing our use of plastic because it is ending up in our bodies. Um, and so we should just really at some point say we're going to stop with the madness and start creating systems. Like I said earlier, I'm going to disrupt systems that aren't working. Um, the current dis ease of disposal system is not working in our country. And if we only rely on volunteers to pick up trash, we will be picking up trash and plastic off the roads and our creeks and streams for the next hundred years. Or we can just create products um, that biodegrade and are not harmful and don't have to be picked up in that manner. Um, personal opinion, but uh, that's those are a couple of examples. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Commissioner Terry. Um, for both actually Commissioner Terry and Commissioner Patrick, I think it's safe to say that if you have any additional questions for our commissioners, uh, you can probably send them an email and their staff will definitely get back to you or the commissioner, Mrs. Terry, is very responsive. Um, but I want to thank you both uh, for taking the time to share with us today. It has been an honor to speak with you all today. I'm going to now turn it back over to Frank Atwater. Thank you, Commissioner Patrick and Commissioner Terry for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us today. I can tell you, this was very informative. You can tell by the questions that we received from our audience that it was informative, but they're in tune. They're in tune to what's going on in DeKalb County. And I know they appreciate having you both on board with the commissioners to make these things happen. I also want to thank our sponsors once again for helping us make this event a success. Uh, Kaiser Permanente, AT&T and Verizon Wireless. So our, our audience and friends on, we invite you to join us for our upcoming events an in-person meet with the president reception on September 21st. Yes, you get a chance to meet me in person. I hope you enjoy it. Um, but we're having a president's meet the president reception on September 21st at the Stone Ridge Event Center. And then we're having our 16th annual golf classic on October 4th. And so visit our website at the thecabchamber.org to learn more about these events. So thanks to all of you for attending today and supporting the chamber and our community. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.